Welcome to another episode of the Marketer's Edge, a series designed to share senior level marketing perspective about marketer challenges, opportunities, and agency relationships. Our goal is to help marketers and agencies learn from other marketers across different industries. Today, we're talking with Emily Gonzalez, the Vice President of Marketing and Communications at Visit Mobile. Emily, thanks so much for joining us today. How have you been? It, I've been fantastic. I'm so honored to be with you um, and, and everyone else that's listening. Uh, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, and I was really looking forward to uh, talking with you today, learning about uh, more about Mobile, Alabama, which I have to admit, I have never been there. But uh, based on our earlier conversation, uh, it's in the queue for a visit for sure. So, um, so I've got a, a small handful of questions for you today, but um, I thought before we get into those, can you tell me a little bit about Visit Mobile and um, what you do for the organization? I'd like our audience to know uh, what kind of um, organization it is and, and what you do for them. Absolutely. So I'll be honest with you. Most people have no idea what we do. Um, <laughs> Visit Mobile is a destination marketing organization and we actually are the Convention and Visitors Bureau um, for the greater Mobile area. Our job is to bring visitors to the area. Almost every city in America has one of these people if you have visitors. Um, and the reason you don't know about us is because our job is to talk with people outside of the community. But our primary people we serve is the community itself. Yeah. Um, we're mostly a drive market. Um, we're located on the in intersection of I-10 and I-65. So if you're going pretty much anywhere in the United States, you're almost going to pass us. Um, mm -hmm. The big thing is you need to stop. Um, we do have a wonderful airport um, and we're making some um, in amazing improvements. We're actually bringing our airport downtown Mobile. Um, mm -hmm. So we're really looking for an influx in um, an airlift um, because really it's going to be about six minutes from downtown. Gotcha. Um, that's a major, major feature. Um, and it's also um, just recently become an international airport. So we're seeing a lot of international travel from um, the industry that we have here in the area. So we're very, very excited about that airport move in 2024. Um, Visit Mobile really focuses um, for the visitors, as I said, but we focus on six pillars. We have um, history. We're a 300 year old um, city that's older than the state of Alabama and older than most cities in the, U um, in the US's Southeast. Um, we have outdoor eco tourism of people who come here because we have the nation's second most biodiverse um, ecosystem here in our Mobile Tensaw River Delta. Um, so we have a lot of lot of outdoor ecotourism. Um, we have culinary travel. And let me tell you, you will not leave Mobile hungry. Um, <laughs> we're, we have a walkable downtown with 50 restaurants that um, you can get to. You can park your car and never go hungry and never eat in the same place twice. And they are all local restaurants. You can't go outside of one hand um, with the number of chains that we have in our downtown market. Um, then, of course, we have um, our arts and we have our culture. We're a great um, community. Um, we have a standalone arts and standalone culture. It's very, very different. Um, we don't try to lump them together like some areas do because we're really unique. And what really makes us unique is our last pillar that I love to say for uh, the end, and that's that we are the birthplace of Mardi Gras in the United States. So if you think of Mardi Gras, you often think of Louisiana, but it right. actually began here before Louisiana was even founded. So um, so that's a little feather in our cap and, um, and we've had a great time um, going back and forth, but um, our Mardi Gras is very, um, very wonderful. It's it's several weeks. We have a lot of parading organizations and it's very family friendly. So um, we welcome uh, close to a million visitors every year just on that pillar alone. That, that That's awesome. That's exciting. And I'm, I'm just curious, uh, sort of your, your focus is on the consumer. Is there in, in your city and many other cities sort of a separate group that's focused on bringing business to uh, Mobile? 
Right. So we our chair, Chamber of Commerce has a wonderful economic development arm um, and they bring the businesses in. Our right. job is to bring the visitors in. So yeah. we focus a lot on the leisure traveler. Um, we have a cruise ship with Carnival Cruise Lines. Most people don't think of Mobile as a port city, but we're only three hours from um, from embarkment to the Gulf of Mexico to um, have wonderful cruises. Um, and then we focus on meetings and conventions. So about 20% of our visitors every year come from different meetings, conventions, sporting events, things of that nature. Okay, cool. And I noticed- um, so I It's very around. diverse um, market set. Okay, great. I, I took a look at your LinkedIn profile and I noticed you spent a fair amount of time as Director of Marketing and Public Relations for Kaiser Realty by Wyndham Vacation Rentals before joining Visit Mobile about four years ago. Um, I'm curious, what are some of the biggest differences marketing vacation rentals versus a city like Mobile? You know, I've always been in the travel and tourism and hospitality industry or something related to that in the 20 years since I've been out of um, undergraduate school. And, um, and what I've really found is that everyone loves to travel. Um, and, and I've loved to be able to thread my past experiences together to culminate in working for a Convention and Visitors Bureau or a destination marketing organization. Um, the biggest challenge I had and the biggest difference um, keeping my marketing hat on was that I didn't have a product to sell. Um, with working for a vacation rental company, I was able to put an ad out and watch the conversion, watch everything from deliverabilities and impressions to clicks to absolute conversion to booking a reservation and them coming in and knowing that that ad created that dollar. Right. Um, when you work for a destination marketing organization in a, in a city, you don't have that ability. So um, you realize that you're selling an area and you're, and you're not selling a product um, and that you, know, you really have that community focus in mind. It's more of a servant's mentality um, instead of having that dollar mentality because we don't have a ticket to sell, we don't have a burger to sell, we don't have a room night to sell, but we right. do have experiences to promote. Um, and that really changes the focus of how you market um, and how you promote what you're trying to sell. Got it. I would imagine, you know, a lot of the travel tourism advertising you see, it's very sort of emotionally sort of engaging. They're trying to draw you in with the beauty of the area or the, you know, the, in the case of maybe a vacation rental, you know, the experience that you're going to have. Is there, is there a difference in the way you sort of message or talk about a city like Mobile relative to a product like a Wyndham vacation rental? Absolutely. So the biggest difference um, that you see is you're selling um, not just a condo or a beach house. Um, and and that, that was a big transition as well as I was going from the beach. Everyone knows what the beach is. It's, mm -hmm. it's white sand, it's blue green water, it's, um, it's, it's sunburns and, um, and, and cookouts and some seafood and, and all the great lovely things. And you come to um, Mobile and it's a very, very diverse um, urban environment. Um, I spoke earlier about um, our ecosystem here that we have with America's Amazon. So you can be kayaking and paddle boarding and, um, and, and air, going out on airboat adventures and, and fishing and all of the fun things on the water, but it's a totally different experience doing that um, in the Gulf of Mexico and, or in a back bay than um, in the Mobile River or in the Tensaw Delta. And then you have the urban city itself with high rises and um, museums, a lot more attractive actions and and just the diversity of the people that are here so um, I think that it's it's very very different and then also in a city in this urban city you have um, year-round things to do where you think about a beach destination and it's a lot about seasonality sure. so um, you spend a lot of your marketing efforts and so forth working on the shoulder seasons because the right. peak season takes care of itself right so so I'm curious how, things how never that... stop in a city yep so I'm curious, and how, how do you determine where to place your marketing emphasis when you have so many different order, offerings or categories of offerings? Um, you know, as I looked at your website and it's very robust. You know, how do you determine 
with all of those things, uh, where to put the emphasis, or does it vary by location that you're marketing or, or type of individual that you're marketing to? Absolutely. That's a fantastic question because that's really one of our biggest challenges. Um, and, and the answer is really just research. Um, okay. It's really knowing and understanding the data and the analytics of who are coming in. Um, and that's one of the things that coming from um, an actual company that had a hard sell object to like have a sustainable cash dollar come through um, is to find creative ways to get the data that you need um, to make those smart decisions. Um, like I said earlier, we're a drive market. We're looking at, you know, three, five, ten hours um, away. Um, we're looking at fly markets and things like that. So it's it does have a lot to do with behavioral interests um, and it has a lot to do with um, events that are happening um, and then with types of people who will travel to a market like this. Um, and then also capturing travelers who are coming through maybe from Texas to Orlando, this is a great mid spot. So saying stop for a night or two, um, mm -hmm. stretch, let, stretch your legs out, let the kids run around, send, let mm -hmm. them burn some energy in some museums, um, grab some great food, uh, you know, really paying attention to who is coming um, mm -hmm. and, and inviting them and more people like them, and then finding the gaps of the events that people that are happening that people have those interests that they may not think of Mobile to come to. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, so you are. Uh, it sounds like using data and analytics uh, in a fairly robust way to help uh, really optimize your marketing efforts. Is that is that fairly accurate? That's fairly accurate. Research is our best friend. Um, <laughs> it's it's knowing what you're doing. It's 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 compassion with the data to back it up. Um, it's you know you know you know your grandparents had that amazing wisdom because they lived the life to understand it, but they also delivered that information um, and that wisdom to you in a good way. Um, mm -hmm. That you know right now, if you're thinking about your grandparents, you probably have little heartstring pulls. That's what we're trying to do with Mobile. We're finding the right people and we're pulling on their heartstrings to make them want to come, get excited, listen to some music, eat some food, um, have some adventures, and things of that nature. Yeah. Do you, um, are you able to get data from uh, the, the different retailers and restaurants and attractions within Mobile to help you better your marketing efforts or, or does that have to come from your own initiatives? The majority of that information comes from our own initiatives. Okay. Um, and, and that is where, you know, you really have to back into some information. Um, a lot of, you know, the major hotel groups, that information is proprietary. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the local retailers don't really understand, our small retailers don't understand how to pull that data out. They're just right. trying to open the doors and keep, you know, keep things afloat. Um, so what we've been able to do is work with some really interesting data companies that can look at net economic impacts of people who have seen our ads and come into town. And then you work with other organizations um, that can actually come in and track um, GPS locations on your phone um, to watch movements so we can see how people interact. Um, right. And then you have um, wonderful things like, say, an Expedia Media Group who will be able to um, tell us you know, who's come in from what markets, um, how long they stay, um, what their booking windows were, and things of that nature. So that gives us a nice glimpse. There's not one piece of data that is the, um, sure. you know, the silver bullet for anything. It, you sure. all always have to look at data um, as a puzzle piece. Got it. Okay. What, what would you say is the biggest challenge you face in marketing for Mobile, Alabama? Um, I would really have to say it have to be budget. So a budget yeah. with for Mobile compared to our comp set, a budget um, for all the different things we have to promote. How do you put, how do you decide where to put so much X amount of money in? Um, budget, because, you know, 
advertising is expensive. Mm -hmm. um, we have the five pillars, we have crews, we have meetings and conventions, we have cultural heritage tourism that is really about to explode here um, with the discovery of the Clotilda, which was the last slave ship to bring human cargo into the United States 50 mm -hmm. years after it was made illegal. And the mm -hmm. resiliency of those survivors to build a community here in Mobile that still exists today. Mm -hmm. um, there's documentaries happening, um, there's cultural centers that are open opening up and tourism is beginning to boom around that. Um, so that will increase our major focus on an international level, not just on a regional or national level. Um, did I say budget? Have yeah. I mentioned budget? It's always the biggest challenge I think that's <laughs> for any marketing person. I think that's really there. They would love to do so many things. Right. Um, but, you know, Mobile is also you know, another challenge for, for us in Mobile is that um, we're unique to the state of Alabama. You know, the southern states tend to have, every state tends to have its own personal reputation. Well, Mobile is very, very diverse. Um, and DEI is a big initiative for us. Um, so we're a very open community to the LGBTQ plus community. Um, our, um, our population's 52% black. Um, our education levels are, you know, really nice. Um, and you know our workforce is strong. So um, when you think about the reputation of the state and what Alabama has to offer versus what Mobile, our coastal community has to offer, um, we often find ourselves, especially in the meetings and conventions world, fighting against the reputation of people who don't know. But once mm -hmm. they visited once, they're coming sure. back. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, good, good point. Oh, you, you know, and I forgot to mention, uh, I saw on LinkedIn, wanted to say congratulations for graduating from the Southeast Tourism Marketing College uh, with, I think it was 28 of your peers. Uh, it's very exciting. You know, can you maybe tell us a little bit about this degree and what it means for your work at Visit Mobile? Absolutely. So the Southeast Tourism Society is um, a fantastic organization that is actually celebrating its 39th birthday, 39th year in existence. Um, oh, wow. The birthday is actually this week as we're recording to look, uh, recording this. But um, and, and it's fantastic. It's 14 states that have come together to really focus on education and advocacy. Um, 30 years ago, um, Marketing College was founded. It's a three year program that takes um, people in the destination marketing world and takes you through um, educational series to think about the fundamentals um, all the way up to advanced marketing. Mm -hmm. um, so there's 1,300 graduates that have made it through in 30 years. That's not a large number. It's um, it's a nice bit of uh, time and investment to put um, to put in, but um, really it's it's all about education. It's about watching trends and how trends change, and you can see that even throughout your three-year program. Um, and and then really it's about networking. It's meeting people who do a lot of different things in other markets in the 14 Southern states. Um, and you make some of the best friends of your life and you always have someone to lean on. Um, so this is, this has been a fantastic program and opportunity for me to be a part of. Um, and, and I'm really honored to, to finally, to finally have, um, yeah. have completed the process and, um, and taking the time to stop that's, and do it. Um, so if anyone's in the South and you're in the travel and tourism, even if you're not in the South, we've had some people from um, other markets, um, other States outside of the South come in and be in some classes. So hmm. that's um, great. Yeah. it's exciting. Yeah. The, uh, the the pictures were great of all of you uh, graduates celebrating. So it had to have been pretty exciting. So congratulations again on that. Yeah, the, the, the thank you. The class started at about 150 and 29 of us made it through COVID and all the changes. Um, <laughs> Crazy. So, um, you know, the, and, and, and others will delay They're, from our original class. They'll they'll graduate soon. That's cool. So I'm curious, how has the business of marketing a city like Mobile changed over the years? You know, with more people traveling longer distances, you know, does that change kind of the footprint of your marketing, marketing and or the you know, type of visitors you target or the, the marketing tools you use? Can you just talk to me a little bit about, you know, over you've been with the organization for four plus years, uh, you know, how has the business of marketing a city like Mobile changed? Well, change is real in, in every type of industry and it's constant. Um, and things have dramatically changed from just four years ago when I started. Um, we were 
primarily a drive market. We still are. Um, we've gone through COVID. There's been a lot of changes in the world. Um, you know, gas prices uh, increase and decrease um, and, you know, threats of recessions come and go. Um, but mobiles tends to be a great core drive market. Um, and even when you can't go internationally um, and travel somewhere or you can't get all the way across the country, um, this area of the world is a fantastic place to visit. So we really count on that core group. But um, as things grow um, and as distance goes, um, you see more and more people coming from longer distance away, which means they're coming and staying longer. Um, bringing in the international airport in 2024 downtown, we anticipate a big shift there um, and the type of visitor that we have um, because that will really open up um, availability to get from the airport to basically mm -hmm. where most visitors spend their time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we've also seen the biggest change we've really seen over the last four years is our partnerships with the state government and with regional organizations with things like we have a coastal Alabama partnership. So we look at Mobile and Baldwin counties in the state of Alabama, and we do a lot to work on discussions about ecotourism and travel and how we can work together with the Gulf Shores and Orange Beach that I was at, um, you know, for 10 years before I came to Mobile. Great partnerships there, um, everything on the eastern shore and then what we have to offer in Mobile County. Um, we also have some great state um, organizations that we work with, with the State okay. Office of Tourism. Um, and then some organizations, we have a group that we call the Gator Group, um, and it's with public relations, and it's from Alabama through Louisiana and everyone on the coastal um, northern Gulf Gulf of Mexico, um, and we work with a lot of travel writers. So we'll create itineraries that are multi-state, multi-city, um, mm -hmm. and, and we'll make sure that they can come in and really experience all of the different types of areas um, that the Northern Gulf of Mexico has to offer. Mm -hmm. So the partnerships have been key, um, and they've really, really grown over the past four years. That's great, that's great. So how, how do you determine the best positioning for Mobile to most effectively differentiate it from other destinations? Um, uh, is there, you know, when you walked in four plus years ago, uh, did you see opportunities to really sort of, you know, uh, refine the positioning or, or how, you know, how, uh, how, I know I'm throwing a lot at you here, but how, how does one sort of go about figuring out the best way and the most unique way to talk about a city like Mobile? You know, I think that trying to differentiate yourself is what every marketer does, no matter if they're selling a product or a destination. Sure. Um, and, and finding that is really, really difficult, um, especially if you're really close to the product. Um, so the good thing we can say and the best thing that we've been able to say over the last four years is that good SEO is your best friend um, hmm. because yeah. The analytics there will tell you what people are looking for. So you can make sure that you are putting that in their face and making sure that it's on your website, that you have content to support what people are interested in. Then you can turn around and build things that they may not know they're interested in and bring that to the forefront. So that's really the first place we needed to start. Um, when I got here to visit Mobile, we weren't um, doing a lot of SEO. Um, it was handled internally as best we could. Mm -hmm. um, we weren't doing a lot of research. Um, it was basically Google Analytics, high five, that's what we have. And we're gonna watch some um, impressions and clicks happen. And, and, mm -hmm. and we think that's a good old job. Um, and I'm a wee bit of a, a, of a data nerd and, um, and it, you know, it's taken a little bit of time, but we've really, really dug into, um, into that research um, and, yeah. and leaned on things and made sure that any, any, any campaigns that we're doing, that we're getting real true data back. Um, you know, when, when we look at um, history, every city has its history, but not every city has, you know, Mardi Gras and Joe Kane and the story of the resiliency of Africa town and sports. We have three college bowl games, collegiate bowl games that happen in Mobile. If you like mm -hmm. sports at all, this is a great city for you. Um, we have five Hall of Fame baseball players. You know, you just like sports and you're interested in that type of thing. You're gonna stumble across Mobile because 
even if you're not really a sports person, I bet you know who Hank Aaron is. Um, so, um, you know, and then with the biodiverse ecotourism and our walkability, you know, there's just so much there. So it's easy to get someone interested in one thing and really plug in the rest. But it's the data that helps us find those people and that behavioral um, and those interest levels that are really making the difference and how we're, we're able to effectively take um, our budgets and, and present those experiences to the people who yeah. are um, interested in coming. That's great. So um, do you currently use an agency to help with any of your marketing efforts? We occasionally will outsource an agency um, okay. for a special project or campaign, um, okay. but we mostly do everything in-house. So creative and design is in-house, our social media is in-house, our media buying is in-house um, and that type of thing. Uh, we do have a public relations agency um, that we use and they are phenomenal. Um, they're a small agency that I cannot brag on enough. They've done a tremendous mm -hmm. job. We've just had them um, for just at a year and um, and and I couldn't imagine life without them. They've been great. great. What, what do you see as the advantages of having uh, an in-house staff? So really it's it's about you know your team. Um, so it's about being able to control um, the vetting opportunity and vetting the opportunities that come to you. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, if you have an agency, we've had agent, I've worked with agencies in the past, you never even know about the opportunities that come. Mm -hmm. um, and that's part of their job, but um, you really get to have control there. Um, and when you're trying to promote something, it's product knowledge. So really understanding our own product, we're close to it. We love it. We love it intensely. So um, no one's going to present that more passionately than we will. Um, and it allows us to easily pivot. So when we're looking at the data and we see something that might need to shift from one market to the next or shift the creativity, we can do that on the fly. Um, and, you know, did I mention earlier budget? <laughs> really having, you know, doing things in-house saves budget um, because we're not paying the, the agency sure. fees and, and any yeah. markups on media buys. Um, yeah. So with, with a small, um, small budget, we, you know, we can save that and, and take those nickels and pennies over here that we're, we're gathering and have another campaign. That's great. You, you did say budget. <laughs> uh, so no. um, just, Two more questions for you. So any advice you give to a marketer thinking about bringing a new agency on board? Absolutely. You know, agencies are fantastic. If it's not in your wheelhouse, then make sure you go find a good one. Um, but you have to be honest with yourself. Look at the skill sets of your team and look at their bandwidth because they may have all the talent in the world and they just can't do anymore. So pay close attention to that. Um, and then make sure you find an agency that makes you a priority. Um, you're not just another number and you're not just something else that's in a checklist. Um, and make sure that you have clear priorities and intentions and needs laid out before you hire the agency. Um, so they know what they are working to bring in. Um, because there's nothing like being six months down the road and you thinking you're going to get all this, but that was never clearly conveyed. Yeah. Um, you know, and then ask peers, a, a big, big recommendation would be to ask your peers who they use, who right. they like, um, go to other markets, go to other products that are like yours, um, and find out who's being really successful, um, mm -hmm. and find out, find agencies like that and, and comps. Um, and then the last but not least and and this is really really key for us is make sure your agency has a dedicated person specifically for you and all your needs that way you're not chasing other people around they'll have a lot of people who do a lot of things but if you have one point person who can really take care of you then you really know that you are being loved in the way you need to be loved and cared for um, as your company and product needs to be cared for yeah that's great. That's great. Great advice. Uh, and I'm sure it'll be helpful to uh, marketers listening today that are thinking about bringing a new agency on board. So appreciate that. And, and my last question to you is if an agency was trying to knock down your door uh, and attempting to win business from you, what, what advice would you give them? Um, really, it's all about the relationships. 
um, and understanding us and who we are. Um, so many agencies will call on us and they won't understand what a destination marketing organization does. Hmm. And they don't understand that um, where our funding comes from, that it's, um, we, although we have a board of directors and we have a, a set budget, we're, you know, governmental and semi-political, um, that sometimes there's red, tra red tape and, and caveats and strings attached to how we can and cannot spend the money. Um, and they're not well aware that we don't have a hard sell product. So, you know, there's that just have the hotels tell you that the person came in and the reservation came from your website and how much money you made. And it's like, right. that's not how this works. So really understanding what we do, that's key. Um, and then when you're approaching, you know, knowing that we don't have hard, a hard conversion cell, come with some ideas and recommendations of metrics that we can track. Um, what can we call a conversion? What can we define as a win? Um, come with recommendations there and then um, really look around the industry and make sure that when you come to hold a conversation with us, you understand what industry benchmarks are for our specific type of travel and tourism. Yeah, that's great. Do you, get, do you get a lot of calls from agencies every week? Um, daily. <laughs> so, um, yeah. What, what, what is the worst sales pitch you've heard from an agency? Uh, we've worked with X, so you should just trust us. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's crazy, I'm sure. Yeah, I get, uh, get sales sales emails all the time and it's it's amazing what some people think uh is helpful and, and works but uh well listen emily i i really appreciate your time uh some great insights about um the you know marketing of a city like mobile alabama it sounds like a a great place to visit uh, i know it's on my list for uh uh, you know, the, the, the next city or two to, to stop in and spend some good quality time. And, and you got me with the great food and the local food because I'm all about that. But uh, now really interesting uh, perspective and, um, uh, you know, really appreciate uh, uh, you giving us, uh, you know, sharing with us some of your thinking and, and certainly love the enthusiasm for uh, your brand and, and that that clearly comes across and I would imagine in a position like yours is, is super critical. You know, you got to love the brand that you're selling and it, it really uh, appears that you do. So so thanks so much and, and I, I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of your week and you have a, a really nice weekend down there in Mobile. Thank you so much. It's been an honor to be here with you today. All right. Thanks a lot.